Welcome to the joy of painting with Sawtooth Tactical. Today, we are going to take a bunch of these and we're going to paint this rifle. In case you missed my last painting video, I painted my 11 and a half inch air pistol and it turned out fantastic. At least, in my opinion, it did. So today, it's time to paint another one. I will be using the same stencil that I used last time because I really liked the way that pattern turned out. But I'm gonna go with a little bit different of a color scheme. So stay tuned. We're gonna do this step by step in case you missed the last one. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Subscribe to Sati Tactical. And let's get painting. Let's get started. This is the rifle that we will be painting today. This is actually, this was my first AR-15. It's a Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Sport 2. As I've said in many videos before, I've upgraded and changed just about everything on it. But maybe today is gonna to be the biggest change of all, at least when it comes to how it looks. So, the first thing that we're gonna do we're gonna wipe the gun down. I'm gonna remove a couple of the accessories. I like to keep my grips um, unpainted, as well as my stock, just so that the parts that interact with me the most don't have paint rubbing off on my hands and my cheek and stuff. Although, if you do it right and it cures well, you don't really have to worry about that anyway. But that's just the way that I have found that I like to paint my guns. I don't really like having my grips feeling tacky and stuff afterward. So we're going to remove a few things, give it a little wipe down, and then get started. So I removed my optics, both the LPVO and the offset red dot. I also removed my vertical foregrip and my pistol grip. And I put the one that I usually use as a placeholder while I'm painting my guns in here. Same thing with the Radian Raptor charging handle, just put a basic mil spec one in there. And you don't have to do this. You can leave everything on and just paint the, you know, cover the lenses of your optics if you want. However you want to do it. I don't know if I might use those optics on other guns at some point. And so that's why I'm leaving them unpainted. I switch things around a lot. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to give it a little wipe down, make sure that Nothing, you know, that there's just not oil and stuff in places that'll keep the paint from sticking to it. And then we will get to taping. So I'll be back in a sec. So we've given the rifle a good wipe down. Just tried to get, you know, any grease, oil, dirt off of it. And then of course we tape off the lens for our light. I like to tape off the muzzle device, uh, especially because this one is a mounting system for the Strike Industries oppressor, which is like a blast boarding device and because it gets very hot and the paint will like burn off anyway. I also like to tape off the pressure pad for my light, just keep it the same texture as it normally is. And the trigger, you really don't have to tape off any of these things if you don't want, except for your light lens or lenses on your optics. Um, but that's really all I tape these days. Everything else can get paint. Make sure you leave one magazine in the mag well so that you don't get paint up in there. Plus then you have a magazine that matches the rest of your gun. So first thing we will do is a base coat of this green right here and then we'll go from there. Now that we've got a good base coat of OD green, let it dry in the sun, it makes it dry much quicker. Use thin layers and you'll have an easier time curing it won't stay tacky as long now we are going to take our stencil and some of those other colors flat dark earth black maybe some brown maybe some light green and we'll see how it turns out you can see that things are starting to take shape now remember there are no mistakes only happy little accidents just like bob ross said so the painting portion is done and I do think that it turned out fairly decent. I'm actually pretty dang happy with it. Kind of like the same pattern I put on my 11 and a half inch but with the OD green base coat instead of flat dark earth. But I did use the same stencil 
because I like the effect that it gave. So, time to take the tape off, put all the accessories back on, and see how she looks. And here is the final product. I think it looks pretty good. I'm very happy with the way that it turned out. It looks like a custom Cerakote job, but I did it very quickly in my backyard. So every time that I do this, I feel like I learned something new. I used the same stencil again as I used it the last time, and, uh, and I do like that the pattern that it gets. This time I decided to do a base coat of the OD green, and then I came over it with the stencil with some flat dark earth, a lighter green, and then the black, which I feel like the black is kind of what really makes it pop in the end. And what I learned is this. <laughs> so after the first time I did this, I learned that you had to have your stencil very close to the surface you're painting, or else it just blurs and the paint goes through and you don't actually get the pattern you're looking for. Well, one thing I learned this time, which I should have known because I do know how to paint, you know, you want to do long, thin strokes so that it goes on nice and light. Well, if you're holding your stencil over a part and you spray that too close, that doesn't work out very well either. Even though your stencil is close to the surface you're trying to paint, you still want to have your paint can farther back and do those light coats. Um, a couple places, I came on just a little bit too thick and it was noticeable, although now that it's dried, it really doesn't look too bad. But just, you know, something I thought was worth mentioning. So why do we paint our guns? Or why do people paint their guns? You know, for tactical reasons, it's to break up the outline of your gun. You want to paint it colors that match the environment that you live in. You know, camouflage. Well, I agree with that wholeheartedly if we ever do have to use our firearms in a shit that hits the fan scenario societal collapse something like that yes and so the two that i've painted both of them are painted with colors that are mostly found in nature where i live one of them is so where i live is right in the middle between the desert and the mountains so my first one which i'll cut in a picture of it that one is a little bit more deserty color well, this one is a little bit more woodsy color. But really, I just do it because I think it's fun. I like being creative. I like customizing my guns, making them something totally different. Nobody else in the world has this gun except for me. So don't be afraid to paint your firearms. Um, like Bob Ross said, there are no mistakes, only happy little accidents. And if you do hate it, well, you can always paint over it again. My other one, my 11 and a half inch, I painted it once about a year ago and I repainted it a couple months ago because I didn't really like the first paint job. And the second paint job I think looks awesome. So, you know, there really are no mistakes because you can always redo it. Or you can even strip all the paint back off if that's what you really want to do. So I remember feeling a little anxious about doing the first one. Um, but it's actually exciting. It's a lot of fun. You'll be really happy with the finished product. So I recommend doing it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, subscribe, all of those things. Let me know if you paint your guns or if you prefer to just leave them black. I respond to every comment and I love to interact with you guys. From Sawtooth Tactical, stay strapped or get clapped.